I went 15 years without sleep. 15 without sleep. I have uh, I had seven fragments in my body, right? So I got shot on my right shoulder, right? The bullet traveled, but it stopped in my chest, and then it continued going, and they took it out on the opposite side of it. So for what? the bullet to go straight through oh. without me dying, without me being here, first that's a miracle within itself. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now tuned in to Jaja's Mike, home of the world's toughest leaders. My ladies, today I got a special guest for you today. A gentleman by the name of ESPN. No, not the Sports Network. <laughs> the original ESPN. From the village of Congo to now the University of Harvard. This gentleman and man of God has been asked to share motivation, a message with you all. My little, I was sitting there just in awe of some of the testimonials that he's given me from being shot at, not being able to sleep at night. And literally this man has testimony yours for days. So whatever one he's led to share, I'm gonna allow him to share that with you all. I'm excited, my leaders. So without further ado, ESPN in the building. Thank you, brother. From the village of Congo to Harvard, from being shot, like, what, 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 how's God been in your life? Like, what's on your mind right now? What do you want to share with my leaders? The thing I want to share right now uh, is just about, you know, the wonders of God and how much, uh, how little, you know, we limit ourselves and how much we don't understand who our God is and uh, how much He could do, right? Yeah. So the thing with me is I'm from the Congo. Uh, I'm from a, a small tribe called of the people called the Banyamulenga people, uh, and so the Banyamulenga people, uh, we we love the cattle, we live in the mountains, we you know had a wonderful life. But the Congo or a lot of African countries, they are war, right? And it's a lot of tribal wars, and the, so through those tribal wars, I ended up getting shot at a young age. Uh, I got I got shot me and 166 others. Uh, a lot of people died, but along the way. Um, we realized that that wasn't a safer place to us, so we, you know, had to find refuge. Mm -hmm. So God was helpful to bless us to move us to uh, to the United States. And from the United States, that's when I started discovering who God is in my life. Because at a young age, until now, you know, that I'm 23 years old, it's like you know, it's it's you can't you don't really fathom at a young age what God is in your life yeah. or who He means in your life. Uh, we always go in the shadow of our parents. Like, you know, I go to church because of my dad. You know, yeah. I go to church because of my uncle. I go to church because of my mom. But it's not really until you discover who God is in your life, whenever you t tend to say, okay, if my mom and my uncle was in here, would I be a Christian? Mm, right? So he's yeah. not, it wasn't until like I took, you know, myself out of it. And by that, I means I went through a lot whenever I got shot. Uh, just like, you know, my, like I went, I, I was telling you, I went 15 years without sleep. 15 without sleep. I have uh, I had seven fragments in my body, right? So I got shot on my right shoulder, right? The bullet traveled, but it stopped in my chest, and then it continued going, and they took it out on the opposite side of it. So what? for the bullet to go straight through oh. without me dying, without me being here, first that's a miracle within itself. Yeah. Within itself, right? We like to search for miracles in the Old Testament yeah. or in the New Testament, yeah. but we don't really search within our own miracles. Right, like for God to do something wonderful for David and Moses, and I'm the Moses of today, yeah. and I'm the David of today, yeah. you know. And I need to find that motivation. So for me to hear that, a lot of people tend to say, you know, I haven't seen God in my life. I'm, I'm, I'm an example yeah. that God works and He lives. Um, and so by doing that, I was able to try to cope, right? And my coping mechanism wasn't. I don't do drugs, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do none of that, yeah. thank God. Yeah. But I was still feel a lot of pain. It, it almost led me to that, like suicidal thoughts yeah. and all these things. Um, so not sleeping for 15 years, it's, it's insane, it's insane. So what I did was read books, you know. My parents are very loving and try to support me as much as they can. So they would just give me a lot of like medical books and just life books and all these different books. So I would spend my nights reading instead, so trying to distract myself. Um, other people watch shows, I would read. Then take notes and just you note know, down something, read the Bible now and then. But it wasn't until that I, would, I was like, you know, one day I almost had enough. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know how much more this I could take. Uh, my dad was just like, well, 
let's let's see who let me show you who his like his guy is right and then by him showing me he wants me to go find my relationship with with my god with, with, with god with jesus and so i was just like how do i even start with you know finding a relationship with god like how do like, is there instruction is there a menu is that you know like what's going on uh, but he was just like i just want you to go and pray you know find a verse find a worship song find a prayer daily give your time with god give your time with god and being authentic too with him don't just be uh, don't just praying just in case he's gonna hear you yeah we don't we, we don't believe in a just in case god we believe in an actual god you know yeah. um the god that wasn't men named men didn't name our god no he's the creator of everything so once you accept that who he is and you give him your time he's gonna respond yeah <laughs> he's gonna respond a lot of people tend to pray and god doesn't uh, they'd be like god is not really hearing me you're not really hearing god yeah. You, or you, you're saying the wrong thing. Because I feel like what I learned through my journey was that we, we, I feel like we tend to focus more on about what we want, not about more of what God wants. Yeah. We're here to serve Him, right? So for me, just be like, God, I want this. God, I want this. God, I want this. No, He wants you to say, every morning when you wake up, God, thank you for another opportunity. Yeah. The more you thank God, the more He's going to bless you. It's as simple as that. Yeah. You know, we, like, when you say thank you to Him, even before he even does something for you, right? Kind of like the, the one of the stories that of my life that I kind of go with, and also in the Bible is the, uh, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm. You know how they were thrown in the furnace of fire, and uh, they were just like, "Well, I they see your God get you through this, right?" They were just like, "Even if He doesn't save us, nothing's gonna change how I feel about Him. Like even mm. if it, so, that's how I am too. Yeah, because of Him helping me through." Um, my, you know, 15 years of non-sleep, him helping my family through the struggles we went through, and now for him to have blessed me, you know, and, and, and gave me, to, I go to Harvard Medical School, you know, so this is something that was never in my, in my, in, in my head, you know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. uh, we're talking, and like, there's a dream that you have. You have a goal, and you have a dream, right? But there's some time where God has things that are even far beyond your dreams, yeah. something you can ever you will never like, in, like, even put in your dream. A lot to be in your dream because yeah. you know that you can never get there. God is just like, no, like I want you to know who I am. I can get you there. And so God was blessed me to do that, uh, and I also do photography. And photography kind of became this, uh, you know, this wonderful place that I meditate. You know, I go and just clear my mind and put on a worship song and just trying to go capture that right moment. Um, but I also just kind of. He introduced me to a, a lot of a lot of wonderful people. So, it's it's crazy how we tend to say that God doesn't hear us in our life. I want you to know God wants to create a relationship with you. Yeah. God, that that's literally what He wants, right? The whole purpose of us being here, we're just trying to live the life that was destined for us. Yeah. Right? Because sin came along and messed everything up. So this whole whenever talking about what's your purpose, our purpose is trying to go back to the life that we that was destined for us. Yeah. And if that means being here for a hundred years, so be it. Right? We get caught up in the... Somebody said the other day um, that everything about us is rented. Like our body is rented. Our body is not even, it's not even ours. <laughs> when you die, you live... This thing says here. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? So once you discover that that's not who you are, that this is not you, you're something bigger, you're made in His image, yeah. that's the connection we have with Him. So anything you can never do to your body, whatever they can never... That's not who you are. Yeah. And just always knowing that you're always welcome in his arms. Like he's always gonna always gonna accept you. No matter your flaw, no what you can do, whatever. He said, I'll forgive you. Yeah. That's the reason why Jesus died for us. So that we can get that, you know. Um, another another preacher of mine say that like Jesus swallowed death, right? That like he swallowed death. Mm. And so that means when we die, we're in, you know, in Jesus, he, he, he was given a story about how he went to Lazarus to raise him up. Uh -huh. He said, to, to everybody else, Lazarus was dead. To Jesus, Lazarus was asleep, right? And he said that every single time that Jesus was having a conversation with Lazarus' sister, Lazarus was listening. So whenever Jesus said, Lazarus, get up, he heard, he, the whole time he was understanding Jesus because he was never dead. He was in Jesus. Yeah. You know, it's about, because like death can never, he, he conquered death. So even... It, to the people that he died, he never—he wasn't really dead. 
he was still in conversation with God. That's so he was he exact. He was always like, <laughs> Hey Lazarus, get up. Yeah. Wait, what he did? He got up. He said, Okay. Bam. He said, Remove those stones and they got him out. Everybody was shocked, but like to prove that even if we die, we're still always going to hear our God because that's the connection that we have. Mm. You know? He's, he's he's going to hey, come on, get up. Or you're gonna just come up because you're gonna hear him. Yeah. But you have to create that relationship with God. Because at the end of the day, whenever once all this stuff is said and done, we don't really think about the, you know, the, the, the death or the afterlife. But when all this stuff is said and done, and we get up there and doing the judgment day, they're going to be looking at your resume. Okay, nope, nope, nope. You know what I'm talking about? You were too busy about this earth. Now we're about what we're actually supposed to be. Yeah. So you have to start building up your resume right now. You gotta start building up your resume, whatever it is that you're doing. Doesn't mean that you gotta stop your work and go to church, but you get better, you better figure out a way. Yeah. You might, God might even use, hey, you said something, uh, my boy here said something earlier, he said that through your struggles, God can use the same struggles and turn that into glory. Yeah. And we've seen in the Bible so many times yes. that being the actual thing. The thing that you want God to relieve from you is why he uses you to make you great. Yes. You know, so literally that's the key to, to I guess, a life. Once you figure out who got in your life, the sense of peace, that's already said and done. You, you, you're going to feel it as a new person. Yeah. You're going to be like, okay, you're not going to have any worries. Because you know that if you, if you feel depressed, if you feel anxiety, stress, all this other stuff, it's going to be like, hey, you good? You're feeling this? It's only for, for today. Get up. You're fine. Because like, like stress, failure, all this, it's, it's, supposed, it's supposed to happen to us. Yeah, yeah. It's nothing new. You know, it's it's the same, same, same thing that happens. So once you realize that it's supposed to happen to you, what you do when it happens to you, that's what matters. Mm -hmm. But if you understand that this was supposed to happen to you, like, you know, we overcome, you know, the, the what is it, the, there's always, there was always a hill. We always feel like we're always going on mountains. You go up, you know, and then bam, you go down and go back on the other mountains. Sometimes some, some hills might be bigger than others, but there's always going to be those hills. That's this earth that we live in. That's this sinful earth that we live in. But there's no way you can have a sense of peace that you're thinking about when you're still here. Yeah. The one that you're thinking about, it's after here. So oh, you gotta do whatever it takes for you to, you know, to to get to uh, to make it to to get that. And so, and that's the joy that I have within me. That's what I've accepted. I've accepted God as my savior, uh, who He means in my life, what He means to my family, to my friends, and uh, you know, just continue to praise Him every single day. Yeah. Just because that's the only thing I can do. And that's the only thing that I'm continuing to do. I give him thanks more than what I ask of him. Even before, yeah. even before I receive it. You know, even before I'm like, if I know that I, now that I know how much actual like truth I, or how much he does in my life, whenever I pray, I might say, God, I'm on the plane. But before I even ask for that plane, I'm gonna be like, thank you for that plane. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like, you know, thank you for that house. Even yeah. before you have, thank you for that school. Thank you for that car. Thank you for that family. Thank you for that child. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Before you even, because once you, that's what literally faith is, right? You gotta believe before, without yeah. evidence, before it even happens. Yeah. So once you literally be like, you accept that he's gonna do that for you, you know who he means in your life, I, I, I promise you, your life's gonna change. Your connection with God is going to be everything you ever hoped for. I appreciate you for having me on this show to make was it, was it was a blessing talking to you. Come on, it's man. It, it. <laughs> Just one more time, you gotta, you gotta close out. You gotta, mm -hmm. I do that. <laughs> Nah, come on now. <laughs> My leaders, give a round of applause for ESPN. This man is from a small tribe in Congo. Got shot. The enemy tried to ruin his life. And now, here he is, a student at the University of Harvard. A school that he didn't even think or imagine of applying to. My leaders, God can use ESPN. God can use you. I love you all. <laughs> nah, come on now. <laughs>